Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, I wanted to do one more problem with you for chapter three and it's a lab problem. Much like the lab problems you have at the end of the assignment, okay? This is actually from the book on page 170, the last half of 170. It's P339B, okay? And there's all types of adjustments in here and I thought I'd go through this with you. And it's not a terribly long problem, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so this is um, Lopez landscaping. So I'm gonna dive right in. Um, the thing about adjusting entries is the more practice you get, the better, okay? So each Friday, Lopez pays employees for the current week's work. The amount of weekly payroll is $6,500 for a five-day work week. Uh, I mentioned in one of the prior videos um, for this chapter that they often present it this way. You have to just get the daily pay and multiply it by the day it ended. In this case, it, uh, the end of the year falls on a Wednesday, so we're gonna multiply the daily by three and make our adjustment. And they're gonna pay the employees on January 2nd. So for A, for the adjusting entry, okay, this is gonna be an accrued expense for pay. Okay, so I'll do the math on the side. Um, we have, let me see where I wrote my math. We have the 6,500 and it's a five day work week. So that equals 1,300 per day. I have this problem with the tape again. Per day times three days because the period ends on Wednesday. So our adjustment is going to be $3,900 and this is going to be the accrued expense that happened in this period but will be paid for in the next period which is January. So for A, that's the calculation you need to get it, 3,900, three days happened in this particular period. So we have our accrued expense. So we have salaries expense would be our debit for the three days that happened this period. Okay, I'm gonna put a little plus because I'm still putting my pluses and minuses. And then we have the salaries payable. And this is our adjusting entry for our accrued expense, which means it happened this period, but it will be paid for in the next period. Okay, so there's our A. And then we have B. B is on January 1 of the current year, Lopez purchases an insurance policy that covers two years, $7,500. Okay. So, that means it's the end of the year, so it covers two years, so we have to break that up in two. So they prepaid on January 1st for the insurance for two years, $7,500. So one year's gone by from January to December, so how much got expired or used up this year? And that's $3,750, okay? So $3,750 is, this is our deferred or our prepaid expense. So we have for B, okay, here's, there's our $3,750 for the year that the insurance has been used up. So we have insurance expense, And that amount, just figured out by splitting the 7,500 in two, is 3,750. And then we're gonna credit the prepaid because we don't have as much prepaid as we did before. We have half as much. Helps if I write correctly. Okay, so there's a Adjustment for our deferred or prepaid expense. Half the insurance got used up in this period. We still have $3,750 as a balance in prepaid. Okay. So that's B. <clears throat> for letter C, the usual, they're going to give us the on hand for the supplies. 
The beginning balance of office supplies was 3,700. During the year, they bought 5,800 more. And as of the end of the year, December 31st, on hand total, again, on hand means balance, is 3,000. So I'm gonna make a little T account. I like that to demonstrate the supplies. So this is what they're saying. This is office supplies. And there's I abbreviated. And they're saying just by the little um, narrative that it started out at 3,700 at the beginning of the year. And they purchased during the year 5,800. I'll put BB, the beginning balance. They bought 5,800. That was their purchases. And at the, my T account was a little one-sided. Uh, And they're saying at the end of the year, the on-hand total was 3,000. So this is the balance. Remember, on-hand always means balance. So we know this. What we don't know is what got used. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add this up to see how much was available. And we have $9,500 worth of supplies available. 3,000 are left, subtract to get the amount that was used up. Used up equals expense. And that's gonna be your adjustment. So it's 65, right? 37 plus 58, 95, minus the three that's left, we used up 6,500, and that's what we need for our adjustment. Got the balance. That's what everybody wants to do because it's right there and it's easy. But they like to do this just to make it a little bit more tricky. They like you to come up with how much was used. Once in a while they give it to you. It's not too common. <clears throat> okay, so let's do our adjustment. Another deferred or prepaid expense. We have supplies expense being debited for the amount used up. And we just figured out that was $6,500 worth. And credit office supplies, because they came down, they got used up. Finally, in chapter three, we see supplies being used up. Okay. I was gonna to try to fit this in columns, but with the math, it's gonna be hard, so I'll have to erase that. Okay, so let it D. During December, Lopez designed a landscape plan and the client prepaid them 600, I'm sorry, $6,000. So they had unearned revenue. They got the cash before they did the work. Lopez recorded this amount as unearned revenue. The job will take several months to complete and Lopez estimates that the company earns 70% of the total in this current year. So we're going to see how much was earned from that $6,000 worth of unearned revenue that they already got paid for. So let's multiply that by 70% and see how much they earned this year. And that's going to be our deferred revenue, our unearned revenue that became earned during the period. So that would be, right, 40, that's an easy one even for me to do in my head. 4,200 was earned which means the balance, that's a terrible earned, but you get the idea. Maybe you get the idea. This is earned. Hard to write this low. So, the balance, if we had, were asked that question, and we're not, but the balance would be of the a liability unearned revenue would be 6,000, that was minus the 4,200 that we earned. So it would be eight, uh, 1,800, right? Would be the balance, 1,800, 6,000 minus 42 if we needed that, which we don't right now. What we need to do though is make our adjustment for the unearned revenue that was earned. So we have our liability of unearned revenue coming down by the amount we earned, which was 
4,200. And then we have our service revenue going up by the same amount. Because remember, revenue is recognized when it is earned. So this takes care of recognizing the revenue that was earned. And as you can see, I'm not going to write all the way down here, so I'm going to erase and move on to, that one was letter D, E, F, and G. So give me a sec, and we'll do the last ones, and then I think there's a few subsequent to finish it up, and we'll be all set. This is a good one. It has every type of adjustment. It's really good practice, and it's just like lab problems that you'll be doing. So we're going to let E now, the easiest one, and that's the um, accrued revenue. And as of December 31st, Lopez earned $7,500 for landscaping services completed for Tom Tambale Appliances. They said they would pay them on January 10th. So they did the work, but they didn't get paid yet. Okay, so this is revenue, right, that needs to be recognized. So we have our revenue. Whenever you have an accrued revenue, okay, which means you did the work, you didn't get the money. We're going to debit always accounts receivable. There's no math to figure out. They just tell you most of the time. Sometimes they make you figure it out, but mostly it's very straightforward. AR stands for accounts receivable, 7,500. And then we're going to credit, again, service revenue. Notice the service revenue has a chance to have two increases. It's increased by the amount of unearned revenue that we earned in the deferred revenue category. And in the accrued revenue, it increases by whatever work we already did, but we didn't get paid for it yet. They are supposed to pay January 10th. So we will be getting the money right now. It's accounts receivable. This is that last type of adjustment, the one that we've been doing all along. We just didn't call it an adjusting entry. Okay, so that's the, that's the easiest kind. So let's see F. Depreciation, this is pretty easy too. For the current year, for equipment, is $3,800, and for trucks, it's $1,400. So they're telling us the depreciation. We don't have to figure it out in 101. They just tell it to us. We did see a formula for how they do it, but we don't have to do it. So this is a deferred expense, and we have two to do, so we're gonna make a compound entry. We're gonna have depreciation expense for the equipment, and we're also gonna have depreciation expense for the truck. And we might as well put them together because, you know, they, they Put it in one together and I think the way it's going to be set up on your Pearson it's going to be all one entry using a compound entry. For the equipment it's 3800 and for the truck 14 and then we're going to have accumulated depreciation. Remember that holds the depreciation from period to period. You never credit the asset until you sell it or trade it in or otherwise dispose of it, and we don't do that till 102, chapter 10. Okay, so truck, A slash D stands for accumulated depreciation. For the equipment, 3,800, and for the truck, 1,400. So now we've taken care of, for the whole year, the depreciation on two plant assets, the equipment and truck, and we've recorded it in our contra asset accumulated depreciation. Never credit the asset. Always the accumulated account. Okay, one more in this series, and that's the last one, G. Um, we have another accrued expense. 
They've incurred $250 of interest expense on a $350 interest payment due on January 15th. So they have accrued expense and they're telling you how much it is. So we have interest expense. Again, this is due in January. So it happened in December and it's due in January. That's when it's gonna be paid. And we're also gonna have our interest payable. So there's a couple of accrued expenses here too. It's really a mixed bag, this problem. That's why I chose it. Um, 250 half in this period. So 250 is our interest expense for this year and it's payable in January. The whole thing is going to be, I think, 350 for the interest it says. Yeah, so there, there'll be a hundred dollars of it that will happen in the next period. But right now we're only concerned with the accrued expense for this year. This is running out of ink. I should have another one somewhere. I think it's behind the curtain. Okay, <laughs> thank you. It is. <laughs> thank you very much. Easter egg hunt for markers yeah. there. Easter egg hunts, work with the Easter eggs too. Okay, that's a whole other story. Okay, so that's A through G, the main part of the problem. There's a little bit of a follow-up um, for this on the next page, I believe. Yes, for A, D, and G, we have to do the subsequent entries. So I'm gonna do those real quick. Some of the problems have this, not all of them. So let's see what A was, and then we can do the January R. Uh, and these wouldn't be an adjustment. This would be uh, what happened in January. And A was the salaries they paid. And that was, I think, January 2nd. Yep. So those salaries, the accrued expense that we took care of for our first adjusting entry of the 3900 the salaries are actually getting paid now on the second. So remember that the whole week was 6,500 and we um, accrued the expense of 3,900, which means 2,600 happened in January, 3,900 in December, the rest of it, 2,900 in January. So we do have interest expense when we pay them. I'm sorry, salaries. Oh boy, that's later. I hope you can't hear this tape crunching. Uh, and the salaries expense for January is the other two days, the Thursday and Friday, which happened in January. And then we're gonna reverse our payable because it's no longer payable, we're paying it. And that was the three days that happened back in December, and that was 3,900. And then that meant in cash, we're gonna pay 6,500 for the week. Three days happening last period to this period. So they got paid. These are not adjustments. This is just subsequent to the adjustments. Okay. We know it's not an adjusting entry because it involves cash, and adjusting entries never involve cash. Okay, and then in D, we earn the rest of the revenue, the $1,800. let us see how much we did. Okay, $4,200, yeah, it was um, 42 when we got $7,000, I believe. Yes, D, $6,000. So $42 and $18 is that. Okay, perfect. So that one was A, this one was D, and they want the rest of the revenue that we earned in January. So that would be letter D, the subsequent entry. Excuse me, let me get my right page. Um, we have Unearned is completely going to go to zero now. 
because we earn the rest of it. And that would be 1800. And then our service revenue is credited for the rest of it that got earned. Remember, we did the 4200 last period. This period, we earned the rest of that liability, which is now all wiped out because we earned it. So that's, we call that a subsequent entry, just like the first one. The very last one is the interest, letter G. Remember, 250 happened in December, the other 100 in January. So we're going to pay that. So we have our interest expense for January. And remember, 350 minus the 250 we already took in December. So it would be $100. Right, 100 plus 250 is 350. And then we're gonna get rid of our interest payable because we're paying it. So interest payable was 250. And then we're paying in cash because the interest is due. And that takes care of the interest payment for January. Recognizing the amount that happened in January getting rid of the payable we took care of by recognizing the accrued expense last month and payment in cash. The problem is totally done. Before I let you go, I just wanted to mention just a couple of quick things to wrap up chapter three. I wanted you again to review the summary of adjusting entries on page 154, all the smart touch adjustments we looked at last time posted to the ledger accounts on the next page, 150, oh, what was that? One second, I've got a three and a five, so let's see what's right, a three out of five. Sorry, the three. 134 is the adjusting entries, 135 is the posting to the ledger or T accounts, and the last thing, was the posh oh the adjusted trial balance on 137 i apologize if i already told you about this the thing i didn't mention is i wanted you to look at the partially completed worksheet on page 141. a worksheet is just like an excel spreadsheet all of this information can be put on a spreadsheet and in chapter three we completed the first six columns in chapter four we're going to do the last two the easy ones so just take a look at that, and it's going to tie right into the next chapter. If you have any questions about anything on the assignment or anything in general, just let me know. I'll see you next time.